Today we're getting into the latest Tesla news, including new funding for Tesla's huge battery factory, Apple partnering with Toyota on the Apple car, Tesla's insane demand this quarter and more, so let's get into it, and a special thanks to Ren for sponsoring this video. First up today, Edmunds released their full review of the Plaid Model S and found a few notable things. For one, they said, quote, as always, Tesla's claims remain optimistic, referring to the quoted 1.99 second zero to 60 that can be achieved, but in very specific circumstances. Here they said, quote, Tesla says the Model S Plaid does zero to 60 miles per hour in 1.99 seconds, and the quarter mile is 9.23 seconds at 155 miles per hour. But our experience, both as professional vehicle testers and Tesla owners, has revealed that you should take Tesla's claims with a grain of salt. But Edmonds also said that, quote, the Model S Plaid is the quickest vehicle Edmonds has ever tested. They put it up against the quickest stock two-wheel vehicles and it beat them. What we're seeing across the board with the Plaid Model S is that just like an EPA estimated range, you shouldn't expect Tesla's quoted results in the real world. They need specific circumstances to be achieved, but the car is no less impressive because of that. Edmonds found it to be incredibly impressive and Doug DeMiro, the guy who has driven every single single car was blown away by this car. It's pretty awesome to see, and it's just the part of Tesla's business that focuses on showing that electric cars are better in every way. Next up, even as supply shortages are happening across the industry, Tesla continues to sell more and more cars. They have been hitting record delivery numbers each quarter for the last few, and it looks like it won't be stopping anytime soon. The signs are there. A long range Model S will come in March to April if you order today, a standard range plus Model 3 will come in January, Model Y in January, and the Model X will hopefully come in March to April if all goes well. As detailed in this Electrek article, quote, Tesla has been known to have intense end of quarter delivery pushes due to its distribution system, which is very different from other automakers that use third-party dealerships. Tesla sells directly to customers with no dealerships, so they own the vehicle until the customer pays, meaning that transit times are extra important for Tesla's financials. If they have cars in transit at the end of the quarter, financials don't look as good, so they push extremely hard at the end of each quarter to sell out of all their inventory and deliver all of their sold cars. This comes with downsides like stress on employees and unfortunate customer experiences when picking up their car in a rush from Tesla. Well, it appears that this isn't stopping anytime soon. According to multiple sources, on Tesla's all-hands meeting last week, Elon Musk said, quote, this month will be the craziest month for deliveries Tesla will ever have. Likely this is due to all of the crazy factors at play. High demand, supply and ship shortages, port issues, exporting cars, launching the new Plaid Model S and more. For next quarter and into 2022, Tesla should have two new factories online making cars, which may be why Elon said this is the craziest month Tesla will ever have. In the future, they'll have more production capacity and hopefully less issues at play affecting production. I've been in the process of trying to get a new Model S and seen four separate delays now, so I really hope that this is something Tesla can improve in the future. I'm not too bothered by it because I know what to expect and it's a wild new car from Tesla. However, if this is your first time buying a Tesla and you're interested in this company and it's up in the air like this and it's able to be pushed back at the drop of a hat with no communication, it's incredibly frustrating. Speaking of this demand though and going into the future, battery production is going to be a key factor. As Tesla sells more electric cars and other manufacturers ramp theirs, battery supply is going to be essential. Tesla just celebrated a large milestone at Giga Nevada where they make their battery packs. That facility has now formally produced its one millionth battery pack. A photo of this was posted on the Tesla Motors subreddit and the signed battery pack says, quote, we have officially built one million packs at Gigafactory Nevada. This factory produces powertrains and 2170 battery cells for the Model 3 and Y, Tesla's most popular and cheapest vehicles for the time being. This is an incredible accomplishment, but Tesla is just getting started with their battery production plans as we saw at their battery day event. While it seems that a lot of what they talked about at that event it will be delayed in classic Tesla fashion, it now appears that Tesla could be getting some extra help with their Berlin battery factory. Reports are saying that Tesla could receive over a $1.35 billion grant for their upcoming battery factory there from the German Ministry for Economic Affairs and Energy. This will be specifically to help build a new battery factory adjacent to Giga Berlin where the Model Y should begin production in October. Quote, if the product and production is successful, a number of 2,000 or more jobs in the battery area of the Grunheide plant is realistic. Now this funding from Germany isn't unheard of or exclusive to Tesla. The BMWI has given other grants for battery factories like one to Opel for over 
$450 million for a battery factory that will cost over $2 billion to create. Germany is serious about electric cars with a goal of around 14 million on roads there in 2030. Quote, in 2030, we will see 14 to 15 million electric vehicles on the roads in Germany. Today, there are a million. This will be a huge advantage for Tesla going forward. Of course, Germany would be giving this over billion dollar grant to provide jobs there and race towards their goals of electrification that seem much more ambitious than the United States, but Tesla will benefit across the board from this. They'll be making their new improved 4680 battery cells there that they can export to wherever they are needed, and this will help them to make the largest battery factory in the world. At the same time, this will help them to make their upcoming vehicles reliant on these cells like the Cybertruck, Roadster, Semi, and most importantly, $25,000 car. The most recent updates on that car from Elon Musk include a predicted timeline of 2023 for production. While this sounds far off, there's a lot that will happen before then, and that car could come much sooner than many are expecting, even if it's in 2023. It should be a game changer that makes electric vehicles affordable to the masses and the smarter option when it comes to true cost of ownership. If it comes in 2023, it will likely come as a fairly normal car, but Elon Musk reportedly asked Tesla employees, quote, do we want to have this car come with a steering wheel and pedals? Other reports say that he indicated this as the goal, shipping this car without a steering wheel or pedals since it will be fully autonomous. That's a lofty goal that may or may not even be possible if they want to do it, but the car itself is very real and very important. This new battery factory in Germany, aided by an over $1 billion grant from the German government, will help out significantly with these goals while providing jobs and more electric cars in Germany. Regarding that grant, the final decision on this will be reportedly made by the end of this year, so it isn't set in stone but looks very promising. The Apple car is something that has been rumored for years, and over the last year it has really come into focus as something that Apple plans to make for real. However, Apple is known to use suppliers to make all of their products, and they appear to be going the same route with getting this car underway. Apparently, Apple has sorted through many different options, unable to make deals. Just this year, we've heard about the possibility of an Apple partnership with Kia. That partnership seemed to be canceled, with new reports then saying it was a possibility again. Then we heard that Apple might use a contractor like Foxconn or Magna to make this car. Apple already uses Foxconn a lot, and Magna is well known for their car assembly, so it could be a good pairing for Apple. Then new reports said that the Apple car may initially be made using the LG Magna E powertrain, which is a collaboration between LG and Magna. Quote, because LG Group affiliates including LG Display, LG Chem, LG Energy Solution, and LG Innotech are already included in Apple's parts supply chain, Apple doesn't have to worry about any supply chain issues. Later reports said Apple was in the early stages of talks with other Chinese EV battery makers for their cars, including CATL and BYD, and then that they are aiming to make their batteries in the United States after all. Quote, Apple reportedly was looking to work with China's two largest battery suppliers, CATL and BYD, but Apple's insistence on using US-made batteries for Apple Car is making such partnerships seem unlikely, said the sources. None of these companies have confirmed the reports. Then Apple was talking with LG and SK Group in South Korea. Foxconn announced that they are building an EV factory in the United States, seemingly unrelated to Apple, and now a new report is in for Apple. But we'll get there in just a minute. Before we go any further, I'd like to give a special thanks to today's sponsor, Ren. Rent is a website where you calculate your carbon footprint, then offset it by funding projects that plant trees and protect rainforests. It's a very easy way to start doing something about the climate crisis in just a few minutes. To get started with Ren, you answer a few questions about where you live, what type of car you drive, what you eat, and your general lifestyle. It calculates all of this so you can see what your carbon footprint truly is and what you can do to reduce it on your own if possible. Right now, no one can really reduce their carbon footprint down to zero, so Ren gives you the option to contribute monthly towards projects that offset your carbon footprint. These contributions will support projects like tree planting, rainforest protection, and more, which all help the environment. Monthly updates show you exactly what your money is spent on, so you get to see the trees you planted and how your contribution is actually being spent. To end the climate crisis, there is a lot of work to be done, but you can start helping today by learning more about Wren on their website, Wren.co. We've partnered with Wren to plant 10 extra trees for the first 100 people who sign up using the link in the description below, so click that link to check it out and start offsetting your carbon footprint today. The latest news says that executives from Apple are currently in Asia to meet representatives from Toyota.
Toyota to discuss a partnership. Quote, Apple's goal is to find a trusted and solid partner from the automotive sector in an attempt to launch its first production vehicle in 2024. From the beginning of this project, the plan was for it to be fully electric, and Apple also is focused on making it semi-autonomous, just like Tesla does. From this new report, it looks like Apple is attempting to partner with a traditional established automaker, but Apple is also looking at other specific partnerships, signaling that they know exactly what type of electric vehicle they want to make, quote, down to the tiniest components. Clearly, Apple is shopping around for exactly the suppliers that they want, and this project is very real. They want to make this car, but it is going to take them some time to truly make it happen. While we see a partnership with Toyota and immediately think of how little experience Toyota has with electric vehicles, there may be a lot more pieces to this puzzle. Reports at the end of 2020 were saying that Apple is working on a revolutionary battery technology. If this were true, they'd likely be using a whole slew of suppliers to make their batteries, others to make specific self-driving components, and others, possibly Toyota, to build the final product with Apple's name on it. From the perspective of Tesla, this all sounds like a dream with 2024 seeming way too late, but also earlier than they could actually achieve. Tesla has worked in electric vehicles for years, and it has been incredibly challenging. They are really hitting their stride now, while others are unfortunately falling behind or just getting started. While I definitely see this point of view and feel that Apple may be entering this space too late with too little to offer, they have done this before, and it's often how they operate. MP3 players existed years before the iPod. Tablets existed years before the iPad. Smartphones existed years before the iPhone, and the list goes on for products that Apple got to very late but did something different and better with. Now, of course, a vehicle and an electric one at that is a much taller order than these products, but Apple has experience being late to things but doing it differently. We'll just have to see how expensive this car truly is when it comes in 2024. Where will Tesla be at that point, though? Assuming all goes well, they should have their $25,000 car hitting full production. The Cybertruck should be out, the Roadster should be beating the new Plaid Model S, and much, much more. If they execute well and supply chain issues let up, they may have a big enough advantage that no matter what Apple does, they can't beat them, but time will tell. I'm always rooting for electric cars in general, and I like Apple overall, so I'm rooting for this car, but we'll have to see who makes it and what it can truly bring by 2024 to actually sell. Next up, and relating to Tesla's growth over the next couple of years, an interesting leaked email came from Elon Musk showing just how much he believes in what Tesla is on track for. Last week it was reported that in an all-hands-on call with Tesla, Elon Musk said he expects Tesla to grow by a factor of 10 at least. In a similar vein, Kathy Wood posted a price target for Tesla, saying, quote, Our estimate for Tesla's success has gone up. The main reason for that is their market share. Instead of going down from year-end 2017 to today, it has actually gone up fairly dramatically. That price target they set was $3,000 per share of Tesla, which currently trades in the 700s. Not only did Elon Musk publicly like a tweet about this, but a leaked email showed that he shared this ARK Invest $3,000 price target with a comment saying, quote, if we execute really well, I agree with ARK Invest. That $3,000 share price would make Tesla worth $3 trillion and make them the most valuable company in the world. Keep in mind that ARK Invest is including the future possibility of Tesla's ride-sharing network or robotaxi network as part of their estimates, so it's not just looking at general vehicle and product shipping. They are also valuing full self-driving, which now appears to be getting tested in Europe as well as the United States. The full self-driving beta, which should be coming to the general public as an option within the next month, has so far been only available in the United States. At Tesla's AI Day, they detailed how they plan to work on the US first to set a baseline and then move to other countries since every country differs so much and has its own challenges. Europe has been incredibly far behind with their FSD package significantly significantly limited compared to what's available in the United States. However, it is now being reported through very reliable Tesla hacker at Green the Only that Tesla has begun testing this latest FSD beta in Europe. Quote, EU is supported and FSD beta is officially testing in EU, just with people under NDAs obviously, so you don't see the videos published. It will still be a long time before the public gets this release there, and Tesla will have to go through regulation, but this may be a sign that the FSD beta to a limited number of testers could be coming to Europe in the next few months if all goes well. Next up, we frequently talk about Tesla software updates, but one particular area people seem to forget about these cars is their sound systems. Every single Tesla sound system is incredible, and the new Model S is their most advanced by far. The description for the new Model S says, quote, a 22 speaker, 960 watt audio system with active noise canceling offers the best listening experience at home or on the road. Interestingly, active noise canceling has not arrived yet in the software, but should be coming very 
soon. But Tesla just pushed an update that added a little more dialing in for the system. Typically there are EQ sliders, but Tesla just added a separate EQ slider for sub compared to the base, so you can dial in each in the new Model S. This is a small update, but it really shows how much things can be updated in these cars that we really don't even think about. Elon responded to this saying, quote, lot of good work happening on Tesla sound codec and audio software in general, aiming for maximum music dopamine in your brain. Elon followed that up in other conversations to say, quote, Tesla audio engineering is great. Obviously, we can't take everything Elon touts about Tesla as a 100% truth until we test it in practice, but I still had no idea that Tesla was actively working on audio software for their cars, which already feature amazing sound systems. It shows how much Tesla is working on things across the board in their cars. Last up today, the Rivian R1T is going to be the first electric truck to launch, and its official EPA range numbers just came in. Rivian impressively exceeded their estimates with the R1T coming in at 314 miles of range. The range is achieved with 70 miles per gallon electric efficiency, which definitely isn't great compared to electric cars in general, but this is going to be the largest electric vehicle shipped yet, and the battery pack will be 135 kilowatt hours, making it the largest battery pack shipped in an electric vehicle yet. As pointed out by Electric, while this efficiency may sound low, this is still about three times more efficient than gas-powered pickup trucks, so it's a big improvement. This is our first look into what a true off-road capable, high-riding electric truck will look like when it comes to range, pack size, and efficiency, so it's great to keep in mind going forward. Tesla's estimates for the Cybertruck, if it got the same efficiency, would require gigantic battery packs, but they are banking on their 4680 cells to take care of some of those issues, along with their superior efficiency, hopefully. Hopefully. It's great to see an all-electric car finally getting official range numbers from the EPA, and the R1S, the SUV version, got a slightly better range of 316 miles. These cars should eventually ship with a larger 400 plus mile battery pack and smaller 250 plus mile battery pack, so there is a lot to be seen once these vehicles get deliveries underway. It's exciting for the future of electric trucks and gives the Cybertruck some true competition when it hopefully comes in late 2022, according to Elon Musk. That's all the latest Tesla news for today, so in the meantime, if you want to see the latest about the three new cars that Tesla will be bringing out in 2023, you can check out that video linked up here or in the description below. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.